What's up guys, it's Mike here with Growing Doors 365. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope everybody in the United States who celebrated Thanksgiving had a wonderful Thanksgiving with their family and friends. So today's episode, I'm actually gonna be taking us um, continuation from the previous episode of the phase one germination stage. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you some of the things that I should have done that I didn't do that put me into a situation that I'm in now in relation to the seeds growing a little bigger than they should be at this point in stage as I'm going to be transporting them, basically transplanting them from the current germination trays into a rock wool cube, which is the growing medium that we're using for the hydroponic grows. I'm going to take you through some of the things that I did, some of the things that I'm going to be doing, and putting things under the dome to get things under the light to basically start the actual uh, phase of the growth. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about in relation to how seeds grow using the method that I use of the water inside the tray. Let me, take, let, me let me show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so for the continuation of this process, you're gonna need a few things. Okay, number one, uncover your seeds. And we're gonna go into this in just a second. I'm gonna show you guys what I was talking about with the basil. You're gonna need your tray a pan where water could actually drip in from these little uh, trays, okay, pl uh, little planter trays, into this larger tray. So they actually, when you put the rock wool cubes in here and they're soaking wet, the water goes through the bottom and it transitions to the bottom here and it kind of sits. I mean, you drain this obviously, but you don't want sitting water inside of your little trays. This is the bucket that I use. These are my rock wool cubes. What I did in this situation, I took the amount of rock wool cubes plus about two to three, depending on how many, how many seeds I threw in and how much plant that I'm considering of basically growing. In this case, I think I did like, um, what did I do? Maybe like 20 in there because each of my reservoirs holds nine. That's 18 at two. Plus I'm doing two additional rock wool cubes because not every single seed will survive the process of going in there and actually growing from that into a small plant, which it then grows into something much larger. Okay, this is the dome that I'm talking about that I use. Okay, this is the thing right here. And this goes right on top of this, just like that. Let me show you guys. Just like that, as you can see. And basically what this is, is creates a humidity atmosphere, a humid atmosphere that allows a better germination process. It allows like, it's almost like, um, basically you need a climate change. It, it, it basically, it's almost like a comparison to dirt and a certain time of the summer where plants are thriving in a better atmosphere. Obviously you don't want it cold, you want this under a light. I do prefer if you have the ability to get a shorter dome because this actually uh, has the ability to make plants get leggy because the light will probably be a little higher, much higher, could be up here. When a light is much closer to the, uh, the actual plants underneath the dome, it reduces the amount of legginess that would be p possible um, you know, during that phase. So I am still growing on, on my grow mat because during the entire process, these seeds are just getting bigger and bigger. I want you to see something. Remember, in the previous episode, I'm just gonna take one of these. In the previous episode, we started out the episode with just a seed, right? Let me see how close I could get here. Look at that. There is the actual green part. It's the actual lettuce. The actual green part. That's the lettuce head. And this is the entire root stem that has developed over the last two to three days. Why I said, why I said I'm a little late because I actually don't like to get them into this length because it's much harder to, to take them from here. Okay, look at all these guys. Look at all those. It's much harder to get them from from here in that sh in that size with this little chopstick that I get from a Chinese restaurant. I take them like this, and I'll show you the process. And I basically insert them into those rock wool cubes, which is that is our technical dirt. You can call it. This is our dirt in a hydroponics uh, you know type of atmosphere because this is our growing medium. That is what our plants grow in, and then they go into here. And then they, we transport them once they're a good size and they're showing roots at the bottom. We transport them into a net pod with some clay pebbles and then let the root system grow and the plant develop up. Okay. 
So this is where we're at with the lettuce here. Unfortunately, I don't think anything happened with these. These might be must be uh, old seeds and nothing happened there. Now, if you actually look here, these are all the basil seeds. Okay, those are all the basil seeds. And if you could take a closer look, let me see how well I could get it. I don't know if the camera could pick it up, but you might be, in the final production, be able to see that the little black seeds, which are the heads, basically, well, technically, the black little seeds come off, okay, as you can see. And any plant might maintain the seed up until a certain time, until the, the head is getting more and more developed. But those little heads have a little jelly on them. It's very interesting. So this is, the, this is where we are with the lettuce and the basil. All right, so now I'm going to take these individually and put them into the rock wool, and then we're going to go from there. So just take one more look into what stage the actual seed plant is at right now in the basil. This is going to be a nice grow. These are looking actually really, really good. All right? All right, so in this thing, let me just take this off the top here. Let me bring my, uh, my bucket full of my... Uh, this is the rock wool. This is what we use as the growing medium. This is the rock wool. It's got a, it, it already has a, a hole in it, but we actually make that hole uh, just a little bigger. And in this water, when I actually do the rock wool, okay, I mix it with just a little bit of the, um, of the root development formula. And that's all linked down below, guys. As you know, everything that I use is linked down below. Just click the show more link right down below underneath the video to see all the links that are available to make your life easier instead of running around trying to find the best products to maintain a grow like I do. I did all the hard work for you. And I've been testing these products for years now. By the way, thank you everybody that continuously watches the videos because our subscriber base continues to climb and climb and climb. People from all around the world that are continuously interested in maintaining their own hydroponic grow operation inside their home home because everybody wants to eat clean. Everybody wants to have a nice clean grow. Alrighty. Alright, so... Let me show you how I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these and put them into here. Okay. Okay, so this is more of the, uh, a difficult process. So literally what I do is I take a chopstick and I take it literally just like this. I don't think we're gonna be able to get a proper, uh, no, it's gonna to be too hard to get a vi vi visualization on how hard it is to actually, see, I already dropped one. But actually what I wanted to show you first, I actually take the stick and I create a little deeper of a hole, just like this. I don't go, I don't go full force in, but I just kind of run it through the holes just to kind of make the hole just a little bigger, just a little bit. This way, it will allow us to do what we need to do as we do it. You can actually take one of these by hand, and here's what I do. You kind of want to be uh, careful with the stem, but the, the stems are really strong overall. And as I press it in like this, they're, they're pretty strong, so you don't have to be... You want to be as gentle as possible because even if it breaks, it will still grow. So as you can see here, let me focus in for you real quick. As you can see right there, <laughs> it's a little out of focus, but let's see if we can get it into focus. Come on, show the audience what you look like. Hmm, I wonder why it can't be. But anyway, as you can see here, this is the overall, um, this is how much I have it inside. It's basically right to the inside there, which is, which is good enough. It's exactly where I want it. Um, you don't want it too high. I never want them too high because it's important that the, the root system overall is inside of the hole. But again, when you're pressing these in, that's why I was saying I, I was in the wrong on the way that... Uh, Unfortunately, a couple things got in the way and I wasn't able to do what I needed to do yesterday because literally these things grow rapidly and uh, all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you have a super long root system and it's really difficult 
to get these inside of the growing mediums it just becomes more painful a lot of times you know they actually make seeds like this that are in pellet form I'm not a huge fan of them because you actually can't see I mean if you're doing like a huge mass production obviously you could take little pellets you just drop them into your uh, growing mediums and hope you hope that something will come up I found that for people that are more intermediate to amateur this is the best way to do it you go ahead and process your seeds through the little dish you know exactly what's grown all of this has life in it it's green it's growing in the water it's perfect all you do is you take one you insert it and that's it and then from here it actually it actually you have an increased rate a faster development rate when the actual developed seed as you see here the head is already green it has a faster rapid chance of growing okay instead of the seed actually being deep down into this hole and after watering and after heat and it being attracted to the light as it grows higher and higher that's a longer that's a, that takes probably a little bit longer but in this case you have a pretty well developed seed and, and, and root system and stem system that as soon as it goes in there and the head showing it'll probably go much higher let's go to the next step as you can see here, I actually put majority of the seeds into the rock wool. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. What I did was, because the basil plants, they literally are like a root. You will see over the next several videos, you will see the development of the basil. And it's just, it goes so much. But what I did was, basil is a type of herb that... I don't consume all the time. So what I did was I dedicated six rock wool cubes just for the basil. But what I did was I actually put two seeds in majority of them. I think except maybe actually this one right here. And the remainder, these two have lettuce. These six have lettuce. As well as these six have lettuce too. So as you can see here, they all have now a little green head sticking right from over top. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the dome over this. And we're going to take this entire thing right downstairs and put it under the light. Let's go do that now. So what I did here was, as you could see, here is the grow setup. It's now basically fully operating. We got the bottom light on. Here's my uh, water pump. There's the uh, fan that I use and my reservoirs. But what I did here was it took one reservoir because you could see the distance from here to the light is a little bit long. But when these reservoirs are in and the plants are coming down, it's pretty good. Um, it might, you know, the light might be a little higher from my last, the way that my last setup was, but this should work. And well, it's all about testing. It's all about seeing what might work. Okay. In this situation, I'm propping up the current seedlings right on top of the uh, reservoir right here. So, and as you'll notice the top, the ventilation things, these things move. You see how they open up? What I'm going to do is right now I'm going to keep them closed for at least... 24 to 48 hours create some decent humidity in here I've actually started I put this in here I started looking at the humidity as well as the overall temperature inside the tent 75.9 is decent I'd like to see actually it's pretty much perfect uh, and the humidity it's pretty low I'd like to see it at maybe like 45 to 50 but overall we're not really growing plants yet and once you actually have uh, the pumps going with the uh, with with the uh, with the with the um, with the stones pumping out air, um, it'll get much more humid in here once you have multiple uh, reservoirs as well. Because so initially this will go into effect. We're going to have two right away uh, underneath the top light, and in the next maybe week or so, as these are developing and being transferred into the reservoirs, I'm going to go ahead and start germinating a new batch of things. This way we could get our third one and consistently get three down below right into the winter it's now december 1st so a lot going on a lot going on as you can see here all the seedlings they're gonna love by the way it's unbelievable like i just want to lift this up to show you guys one more time on december 1st today is december 1st sunday this is what things look like okay this is what they look like they are literally barely barely above the rock wool barely above the rock wool okay we're gonna see what happens in the next couple of days the timer is on so here 
we got our dome, we got our fan, we got our lights, our pumps, and of course, we have that. That's my timer. This is what I use to maintain uh, my timing. It goes on and off. You actually don't have to play with any of that. Uh, it just kind of, the lights go on and off, all depending on your, you know, your daily clock. And you want to run these at about 18 to 19 hours. You want to run the light about 18 to 19 hours a day. And then the remainder of, you know, five or six hours, uh, I mean, five hours would be, um, five or six hours, yeah, would be off, okay? So you want to provide them as much light as possible because this is a synthetic way. It's a synthetic environment to allow for a, full, for, for a spectrum light to be able to develop these plants because it's obviously not being done outside. Anyway, everything that you see here, guys, the links are down below. Please, kindly, if you like my videos, you like learning about hydroponics, make sure to give me the thumbs up, hit the bell down below, all it does is send you a notification every single time I upload a video. And please make sure to hit the links down below to grow like me. Continue growing on your own and continue learning. Hopefully we can all learn together. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, have a great week. It's the start of a new week. Start of a new month. So again, happy holidays for whoever's been celebrating. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next couple of days. Bye.